Elon Musk recently live streamed on X.com an over 40 minute FSD version 12 test drive, which is a version that has not yet been released to the general public. However, once released, version 12 should no longer be a beta version of the software and should be an end to end AI system that very well could be capable of level four or level five autonomous driving. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. As a reminder, Tesla's move from beta version 10 to beta version 11 of their full self-driving software was quite significant because Tesla finally combined city driving and highway driving into what has been referred to as single stack FSD. While the move from beta version 10 to beta version 11 was very significant, the move from beta version 11 to version 12 promises to be much more significant for several key reasons, including the fact as Elon Musk recently posted on x.com quote, version 12 won't be beta. So if this actually ends up being the case and version 12 of Tesla's FSD software is no longer a beta release, this is extremely significant. And this also means as this autoevolution.com article referred to here, this version should be the production ready iteration of their FSD software. Another reason why version 12 of Tesla's FSD software is going to be so significant is because as Elon previously made clear in this post on x.com, version 12 is an end to end AI system meaning that there are not specific lines of code that are written for various aspects of driving, but instead the vehicle makes decisions based on Tesla's neural network, which has been trained with real world data. During his demo drive, which I will highlight later on in the video, Elon Musk multiple times referring to uh, various actions that the car was able to perform, um, made it clear that there were no actual lines of code written to tell the car to perform those various actions. And instead the car was making decisions based on Tesla's neural network, which has been trained with real world data. And thus the vehicle knew how to react in various situations based on that past training. Specifically after the Tesla vehicle uh, successfully completed a roundabout, Elon Musk during his test drive mentioned quote, there is no line of code that says this is a roundabout. There's nothing that says wait X number of seconds, which is what we have in the explicit control stack of version 11. There's over 300,000 lines of C++ in the explicit control stack of version 11. And there's basically none of that in version 12. So while version 11 works with a combination of C++ code and artificial intelligence, version 12 is all artificial intelligence. Also because of this move, FSD 12 is faster than beta 11 as this auto evolution article points out, quote, FSD V12 can manage calculations faster than FSD beta version 11, which uses both neural networks and C++ code. Hardware three cameras are locked at 36 frames per second. Hardware four can go up to 40 FPS. The more FPS, the more information gets fed into the system, the more it knows, the faster it can act. So the only way from here is up. When it comes to frames per second, most videos and movies that we watch are filmed at 24 to 30 frames per second. In fact, this video is being recorded at 30 frames per second. And as you can see, it's quite smooth. So while hardware three computers are set to 36 frames per second and the next version as this autoevolution.com article pointed out should be able to with hardware four go up to 40 frames per second. Um, really anything above 30 probably is sufficient. However, Elon Musk did mention during his test drive quote, our current back of the envelope frame number is we think it could probably run at 50 frames a second. So eventually it looks like Tesla's FSD computer could be capable of actually processing 50 frames per second. And from what I understand, the more frames per second, the quicker that the car can react. And this is something that this autoevolution.com article pointed out once again. Interestingly enough, while Tesla has started installing hardware version four FSD computers in some of their vehicles, as Elon Musk made very clear in this x.com post quote, 
Hardware 4 software will lag Hardware 3 by at least another six months as our focus needs to be on getting FSD on Hardware 3 working super well and provided internationally. Based on this post from Elon, I and others assumed that Hardware 4 equipped cars would not be getting FSD beta for a while. However, as Sawyer Merritt recently wrote about on X.com, this is apparently not the case and Hardware 4 equipped vehicles are starting to get FSD beta. Really for me, the key takeaway from Elon's post is that FSD version 12 should work on Hardware 3 equipped vehicles and it appears like in the future, Hardware 3 should be sufficient when Tesla solves FSD. During his test drive, Elon Musk did point out once again that this version 12 test drive was being completed on version 3 of their FSD computer, so it works on Hardware 3. And he also made it clear that um, this new FSD 12 software does not require a massive amount of computing power, which makes it a very scalable system. And once Tesla spends the money on the front end training the system, that's expensive. But once they get that done, the actual implementation of the software into their vehicles should be somewhat inexpensive in comparison. During his test drive, Elon Musk also made it very clear that version 12 does not require an internet connection to function. Another reason why Tesla's move to version 12 could be extremely significant comes down to the fact that version 12 could finally be a level four or level five system, at least when it comes to capabilities. It will of course take a bit of time before government agencies like the NHTSA approve it as such. But as is written in this DriveTeslaCanada.ca article, Elon Musk, who recently spoke at the World Artificial Intelligence Conference in Shanghai, China, mentioned, quote, In terms of where Tesla is at this stage, I think we are very close to achieving full self-driving without human supervision. This is only speculation, but I think we'll achieve full self-driving, maybe what you would call four or five, I think later this year. As a reminder, when we talk about level four or level five automation, we're referring to these levels that have been set up by SAE International. When it comes to level four or level five, as SAE makes clear in this chart from their website, quote, these automated driving features will not require you to take over while driving. When it comes to the difference between level four and level five, level four means the car is driving and you don't need to take over, but it only works in some situations and in certain areas. Whereas a level five system can drive everywhere in all conditions. With that being said, here are some highlights from Elon's recent version 12 FSD test drive. This drive started at Tesla's global engineering headquarters in Palo Alto, California. Pretty quickly in, the Tesla vehicle was able to successfully navigate a construction zone and Elon Musk mentioned, quote, so it's never seen this construction before. It is near headquarters. This construction is relatively new. Then somewhere around the five minute mark of the video, the vehicle was shown slowing down for speed bumps and Elon mentioned, quote, there's no specific line of code that says slow down for speed bumps. So it is doing this based entirely on video training. Somewhere a little past the seven minute mark, the Tesla vehicle was able to successfully complete a roundabout and Elon mentioned, quote, we have never programmed in the concept of a roundabout. We just showed it a whole bunch of videos about roundabouts. Later on in the video, the vehicle was able to smoothly complete a second roundabout. And then a little bit later, the vehicle was able to successfully navigate a third roundabout. Near the 20 minute mark of the video, Elon did have to intervene and take over for the car because while the vehicle was waiting at a stoplight, um, the green arrow traffic light came on in the lane to the left of the car and this confused the Tesla and it started to pull out into the intersection although um, Elon's lane had a red light still. So Elon took over and kept the vehicle from driving out into the intersection. That was the only intervention um, during this drive but once again Elon Musk mentioned that they could feed data of a similar um, intersection into the neural net and that should fix that issue. They don't have to write specific lines of code to fix that issue but they can do it with video training. Near the 21 minute mark, the vehicle was able to have a very smooth traffic merge. And then a little later at around the 36 minute mark, the vehicle was able to smoothly complete 
um, an unprotected left turn onto a somewhat high speed road. Later, when approaching a stoplight with cars lined up, the car automatically chose the left lane with fewer cars, which really kind of mimics what many humans would have done in that situation. The Tesla vehicle was also able to smoothly complete a turn that required a pretty fast lane merge just after the turn. So those are some of the highlights, but overall it was quite a successful drive for a version 12. And version 12, once again, has not yet been released to the public. But with this kind of drive based on an end-to-end -end AI system, once again, without the C++ code being inserted in, this is quite impressive and gives me a lot of hope for the future. It looks like we may actually be getting close to level four or level five autonomy from Tesla. And I don't know how long it will take regulators to approve such a system, nor how long it will take Tesla to actually release version 12 to the public. But once again, version 12 looks and sounds very promising. And do let me know in the comment section below how long you think it will take for Tesla to actually release a level four or level five system to the public. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I do wanna say thank you once again to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.